but we will begin. Okay, so first of all, I just want to introduce myself. I'm going to do this um, as quickly as I can, seeing as we've already wasted some time with tech issues. <laughs> so if I'm looking at two screens, okay, it's because I've got my phone and I've got Zoom because the recordings just did not want to work. Um, so anyway, I'm Leah. I am a mum, a yoga teacher, a wife, a pet lover, and I used to be very unfit. Like, I was always really skinny growing up, so everybody just assumed that I was fit, which meant, you know, people would constantly compliment me or, like, not being big-headed or anything, but they would say, oh, you're so fit, or, like, you know, if there was a race or something like that, they'd be like, go on, Leah, you're the fit one. But in reality... I might have been skinny, but I was not fit at all. And because of people's words, people's words are so powerful, right? It stopped me from even attempting to get fit because I thought, well, obviously I already am. <laughs> anyway, so what happened is when I hit my 20s and I was going out all the time and stuff, it made me realize how unfit I was. And I thought, right, I'm going to start to do some exercise. I started with Pilates online and it made me feel sick. Like I felt so dizzy. I felt like I was going to be sick every time I did it. I could only get through like five minutes before I felt like I was going to pass out. That's how unfit I was. So it kind of got me a bit hooked because I thought like, oh my God, people's opinions are wrong, first of all. And then I cannot believe I am 20 years old and I can't do a five minute workout without feeling sick like I knew that that was wrong and that is not how you know a healthy person should feel so I started doing the Pilates and then the the girl who did the Pilates she actually did a yoga class and I did that and thought oh my god I love this like that is what got me hooked it was like in my mind back then it was exercise for unfit people because it was less about cardio and more about the stretching which meant yes, I'm not feeling like I'm going to pass out. Like I still sucked at it. I was definitely inflexible and had no mobility whatsoever, but it felt like something that I could do. So that's when I knew I had to change. So I really focused on flexibility and moving my body and trying to get a little bit more healthier. And that is why I'm teaching this today because there is a difference between yoga and mobility. But what I teach is yoga for flexibility, where that kind of molds these two things together. So we've got the yoga in there, you've got the whole mindset and the stretching, but because we're focusing on flexibility, you've also got the mobility drills in there. You've got the strength, you've got the really deep muscle work to help loosen up the entire body. So if that is something that you want, then you are definitely in the right place, okay? So how do you know if you need this? How do you know if you need to work on your mobility? There are eight main signs, right? You experience stiffness. You have limited range of motion. Frequent injuries. You can have chronic pain. Difficulty in squatting or lunging or kind of anything that kind of moves the legs and the hips uneven muscle development which you can tell from doing yoga because when you're doing yoga certain poses might be easy one side and not so easy the other side you can have decreased performance especially if you are somebody who likes to jog or to go to the gym or anything like that and you can have extremely poor posture I say sat with my shoulders rounded so sit straight <laughs> <laughs> okay so if you have any of those eight signs that is a very good reason to work on your mobility when you work on your mobility obviously the opposite to those eight things are going to happen right you are going to reduce aches and pains you're going to reduce injuries you're going to let the blood flow around your body more easily you are going to have your body work better so like the oxygen and blood can get to your muscles and your brain easier it improves your posture, improves performance. It lets you be able to move. And, you know, as we get older, one of the main things we need in life is to move. Now, I see this all the time because I am, or was, sometimes still am, a mobile hairdresser. 
So I have seen a lot of people that can't get out, that can't get to the salon to get their hair done, that I've had to go and do their hair in their home because they can hardly move. Now, if you can work on your mobility and flexibility, it keeps up that range of motion. And, you know, let's be honest, nobody wants to be stuck in a chair 24 seven, right? We want to be out seeing the world and doing things with our kids and our friends and actually having a life. So this is why this is so, so important. And this is why I am so passionate about sharing this stuff. So make sure you stay until the end of this, because I'm going to give you guys watching and you guys who are watching the replay within 24 hours, a very special offer, okay, to really help improve your mobility so that we can keep a normal life and keep moving our bodies. So let's get on to the actual mobility and stretching part, shall we? I've got a few tests for you. Now, don't worry if you cannot do these things, okay? This is why you're at this workshop, right? Because you want to improve your mobility. If you cannot do these things, it's just something to work towards, okay? I'm gonna do a few tests to start with, and then we're gonna actually get into exercises that you can do every single day to improve your mobility. So the first one, let me just check that I am in shot of the Zoom call. Okay, perfect, that's good. And you guys can see me on Facebook. So the first one is to sit cross-legged without putting your hands on the ground, okay? So hands at heart center, you're gonna cross your legs, you're gonna come all the way down to the ground, cross your legs, and then you're gonna try and get back up. Now, it doesn't matter how you get back up, as long as you can get back up, okay? This is like functional mobility. What I like to do is to come onto my knees, uncross the legs, and come up to standing, okay? So let me know if you can do that and try the other side as well. So cross your legs the other side, come down, roll forward and come up. Okay, so that's the first test. Now remember, if you can't do this, please stay around. Don't log off and think, no, I can't do this. I don't want to. This is just something to work towards. Okay, so the next one, that's more about the hips, right? Next one's about the shoulder and the chest. So we're going to take a lunge against the wall. Bend your right leg, place your right leg against the wall. Left leg is in line with your left hip. Okay, so it's not touching the wall, it's just a little bit further up. Right arm is gonna touch the ground, touch the wall, sorry. Left hand on the right arm, keep your knee, your right knee against the wall. Open that left arm up, see if you can bring it all the way to the wall. See if you can get your left shoulder to the wall and bring it back. And open, and back. Okay, keeping that right knee against it. You're trying to get both of your shoulder blades on the wall here. Doesn't matter if they don't remember, it's just a test. Okay, switch to the other side. And we're also noticing how we feel on both sides as well. So left hand against the wall, right hand in. Open up. And open up. Pushing everything against that wall, everything that you can. Okay, so that's the second test. That's more about the shoulders and the chest, which is where a lot of people will struggle with this. Okay, so the next one is a little bit more to do with the shoulders, but the other way. Okay, so we're gonna stand against the wall, hands above the head, touch the wall, keep your elbows on the wall, cactus, without letting your back arch too much and bring your hands back up. Okay, it might be really hard, if your back is as against the wall as you can, it might be really hard to even get your arms to touch the wall. Okay, head touch the wall, bring it up. Like if I try to push my whole back against the wall, really struggle actually to reach it up so high. Okay, so good little test there for the shoulders and reaching up. If you are really into yoga and you're trying to do stuff like handstand, that is definitely the motion you need to work on. Um, the next one is a little bit more about the hips. Okay, so this one is mostly to see the mobility range. Okay, so we're going to come down onto all fours. You're going to bring your left knee up, keep it bent. You're going to push it as far up as you can, then out to the side, then underneath and back to where you started. So you're taking a really big circle 
with the knee. Okay, you're trying to make it as wide as possible, but also notice if there's anywhere that kind of cramps up, anywhere that feels a bit juddery, where it doesn't feel so smooth. And then you're gonna try the opposite side, so right leg up, bring it out and around, and around, make as big of a circle as you can. These ones are really great today. You might even notice as you lift that leg up that you start feeling it in the other side as well. So again, this is our test, right? We're not actually doing the practice just yet. This is just testing what your body can do. Next, I would like you to grab something. I always like to use a yoga block just because I'm a yoga teacher, I have yoga blocks handy. If you have anything that's about this height, perfect. Water bottle, a book, you can even just imagine there's something there, okay? What we're gonna do is sit down, place a block in front of you, more towards your left side. Okay, hands behind you. We're gonna lift that left leg up, place it on the inside of the block, and then lift it up, place it on the outside of the block. Okay, let's do that for five. So just up and over the prop, right? You're not touching the prop, you're purposely trying to avoid it. Notice how that felt. Shake up knees, bring your block to the right side. Do the same on the right side. Up and over. Notice how difficult it is. Notice if your leg is cramping. Notice whereabouts in your body you are feeling this. If you are part of my membership, you know that this is a regular exercise we do. Very, very important for your body. Okay. So again, just take note of how you felt in that move. The next one, we're gonna come all the way up, open your legs quite wide, toes point out at about 45 degree angle, bend into the knees, drop the hips. So dropping the hips as low as possible, wide leg squat, right? You might not get very low, that's fine. Don't lean forward, make sure that your chest is up. Hands at heart center, we're gonna to turn towards the right foot, drop that left knee down, okay, for your low lunge. Come up, you're swiveling the ankles as you do this, goddess or wide squat, turn towards the left, drop the right knee down, up, goddess, turn, right, up, goddess, turn, left. Okay, just notice how this feels. Is there anywhere that makes you feel like you can't do this at all or is it just achy? And take note of that, okay. Last one. This one can be difficult for a lot of people because it also does take a little bit of flexibility. So just bear that in mind. Open your legs wide again, toes out at a 45 degree angle. Bend your right knee, whoops, going backwards, and bring your right bum cheek to your right heel. Your heel can come up off the ground here, okay? Left leg straight, toes point up towards the ceiling. Now what you're gonna try and do is hands at heart center, shift your hips back and see how low you can get that right heel to the ground. The aim here is to get that right heel to the ground. I'm not there yet, okay? But see about yourself, see how you're doing. And then hands to the ground, keep your body low, walk yourself over to the left side. Same thing on the left side. Straighten that right leg, hands to the heart center, shift your hips back, get that left heel as close to the ground as you can. Walk it back over to the right. And to the left. And then come on up. Okay, so that's our testing poses. All of those, if you are aged between, I don't know, let's say five, because five-year-olds can do anything, five and 60, yes, 60, you should be able to do all of these. A normal, healthy body can do all those moves. I'm not saying you have to do like 20 reps of them, but you should be able to do all of those movies. If you cannot, 
we really need to work on your mobility, okay? So let's get into the actual proper exercises for today to improve your entire flexibility with starting some leg swings, okay? Feel free to hold onto a wall here, I am going to. So left hand on the wall, left leg down, right leg down about hips distance. I always like to put my right hand on my right hip. We're gonna pick up that left leg, bring it in front of you, swing it behind, and then swing it in front as much as possible. Swing it behind. It's okay for the torso to move. Just try not to go forward too much because we want to start working into that left hip rather than if you fold forward, you're gonna start working on that right leg as well. So keep a steady balance on that right leg and you're literally, you are fleeing your legs as much as possible. Go as high as possible and as back as possible, okay? Just notice what you're feeling. Breathe. We're gonna do a little test after this as well. Just notice how high up it gets as well. This is why it's good to be on camera because you can see it or have a mirror in front of you. Okay, releasing that. Turn, other side, ground down through your left leg. Give your knees a little shake to start with. Right leg up in front, swing it behind. Okay, up and back. And again, notice like maybe one side gets up higher than the other. Keep breathing. Really important that we focus on the breath. So today is literally just about the movement. The way I teach yoga for flexibility is this kind of stuff, but added in the mindfulness, the breathing, the flexibility as well. Keep breathing and releasing that. Well done, give those legs a bit of a shake. Okay, onto the arms. Stand up, feet, hip sisters. Arms down by the side. <laughs> a little bit awkward now, okay? We're gonna bring the left arm forward, right arm back, and swing it around to start, okay? Left arm forward, right arm back, swing. Swing, so you're helicoptering the arms. If it gets confusing, place the arms down by the side again. One forward, one back. Keep swinging them. A bit of mobility into those joints. So what happens is when we move our joints, your body actually creates synovial fluid, which is like oil for the joints. So the more you actually move, the more your joints oil, and the better it can move. Okay, correct center, other way. Whatever arm went forward last time, and do the other one. You might find one side again is really easy and then the other side isn't. I'm gonna give you a tiny bit of homework today after this as well. I'll tell you about that at the end of this. Really, really important thing that everybody should be doing every single day. Okay. Shake out the shoulders now. Well done. Hopefully, I'm gonna take this off because I'm getting too hot. Hopefully, you're already feeling that your joints are feeling more lubricated and probably achy, right, after all that. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna work a little bit more on the spine. Okay, the spine, the core, the low back. So come down to all fours, shoulders over the wrist, hips above the knees. Let's inhale, drop the belly down. Take a big inhale here. Exhale, push that way around the spine. Inhale, drop it down, arch your back as much as possible. Exhale, push them that way, round your back as much as possible. Inhale down, these are so important for proper spinal movement. Inhale down. And exhale, reverse. Let's do one more. And come back to center. 
Okay. From here, we're going to tuck the toes under, sit back on your heels. Again, notice what your body can do, okay? If this feels too much, find a way around this. Get a stool, get some blocks, take a seat on the edge of the sofa. Open your feet up quite wide, then come into a deep squat. Okay, so your feet should be flat, elbows on the inside of your knees, hands at heart center for your deep squat. Shuffle your feet as wide as you need to so that it feels comfortable. And then if you can get really low, you are gonna lengthen as much as you can through your spine. Okay, try not to round the lengthen. Imagine pushing your chest up. And breathe. Okay, if you're sat on the edge of the chair, that's also fine. Open your knees, lengthen through the spine, get your bum as low as possible. Eventually, just find a prop that's shorter and then shorter and shorter, and you will get lower and lower and lower as you do this, okay? So from here, there's a really good movement that we should all be doing daily. So we're gonna put our hands on the ground, take a big inhale, as you exhale, keep your hands and your feet down, but lift your hips up. Doesn't matter how far up you go. You can still keep a bend in those knees. Inhale, hips as low as possible. Exhale, hips up as high as possible. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. One more. I know this is a lot on the legs. Inhale down. Exhale. Okay. Come back down onto your knees. Well done. We're going to come and sit on our bum now. Feet together. Bring your heels in as much as you can, okay? If it feels too much, just have your legs further away, okay? You don't have to have them as close as I have them. Everybody's body's different. Everybody's going to be in different stages here. Grab hold of the ankles wherever you are. Bring your elbows onto your knees. I'm going to push down and release. So lean forward as you lean forward. Your elbows are pushing your knees open and come back out. Push and up. Push and up. Keep breathing. You guys are going to be feeling so loose after this. I want to know. I want to know how you feel after doing this workshop. Okay, one more. Come back to centre. Start bouncing out those knees. Okay, bounce them up and down. Lengthen through the spine as much as you can. Again, we're not rounding. Open that chest. And bounce the knees up and down. A little bit more into the hip work now. Let's bring, I'm going to turn to face the front of my mat, but you just make sure you've got space around you. Your right lower leg, bring it parallel to the front of your body. Your left knee, you're going to push back. So it's in line with your left hip, okay? So what we're looking at here is we've got this little square shape in front of us and a square shape behind us. Okay, you've made your body into like this, I don't even know what it is, like a weird kind of S, Z, five shape, whatever. <laughs> if this feels too much and you cannot sit up straight here, bring those heels in closer. So instead of squares, you've got triangles, okay? So your right leg now is externally rotated, okay? The thigh bone is rolling out. Your left leg is rolling in. Lengthen through the spine, take a big inhale. Exhale, fold over your right knee. Inhale, come up, hands at heart center, keep your feet where they are, bring your knees up, turn the other side. So you've just gone the opposite way, right? So now your left thigh bone is rolling out, your right thigh bone is rolling in, okay? So inhale, exhale, fold over that left knee. Inhale up, keep your feet where they are, turn back to the right, exhale, fold over the right knee. Inhale up, turn to the left, exhale over the left knee, inhale up, turn to the right. You might be sliding around your mat into different places, that's absolutely fine. Now, I'm going to give you a second option to that. If 
that felt quite difficult, stay with that, okay? If it felt okay and you think you can move on to the next step, I'm gonna show you what to do now, okay? So from here, you're gonna dig down into that right leg. You can use a bit of momentum if you want to. I'm gonna lift the hips up off the ground. Push your hips forward. Come back down. Turn to the other side. Push down through the left. Come up, push your hips forward. Down, back to the right, and up. You should be able to do this without touching the ground. If you have to touch the ground, you're not there yet. Try and do all of this without placing your hands on the ground. Again, this is a movement that we should all be able to do, okay? If not, we really need to work on that mobility, guys. Okay, one more to the left. And take a seat. We're gonna roll all the way over onto all fours. Okay. Shoulders over the wrists, hips above the knees. Bring your left hand to the back of your head. Open that left elbow up so it's all parallel to the ground. Really grip the mat with your right fingertips so that you're not putting all of your weight on your wrist. Okay, make sure most of that weight is in your fingertips and underneath your knuckles. Okay, from here we take a big inhale, lift your left elbow up to the ceiling. Exhale, bring your left elbow down to your right hand. Turn to face your right shoulder. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Two more. Up. Down. Up. Down. Wider. Back to centre. Try to keep your elbow in line with your head. Right, it's not coming forward. It's not going further back. It's going to make it easier if you do that, which we don't want, okay? We are trying to work on our mobility. Right hand up behind the head. Make sure your elbow is parallel to the ground. Grip the mat with your left fingertips. Inhale, open. Exhale. Right elbow comes towards the left hand. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Two more. Up. Down. Up. Down. Well done. Come back to all fours. Big toes together, knees wide, sit the hips back, bring the arms out in front, drop the forehead down to the ground for your child's pose. Okay, so again, this should be more of a relaxing pose. If it's not, good chances are your bum is up quite high. So the aim is to get your hips as low to your heels as possible. If to start with, that means placing a block or a pillow or a blanket in between your bum and your heels, that's fine. Okay, a little bit of shoulder work now. Relaxing your head on the ground. If your head is nowhere near the ground, grab a yoga block, place your head on a block. Relaxing the whole body here. Okay, the only thing that we're gonna be working now is the arms and the shoulders. So relaxing everything down. I'm gonna lift the left hand up Thumb pointing towards the ceiling. Lift it up as much as possible, won't go very far. And down. Lift the right arm up and down. Left up and down. And again, notice which one's harder. Right up and down. Left up. Now let's see if we can do both. <laughs> Might be really hard. And release. And both. And release. One more time, both. And release. Walk yourself up to sit on your knees. Okay. We have got two more stretches to do, or two more, two more mobility drills. Again, this first one is working on the shoulders. Okay, so most of the time, because we're so hunched over cars and phones and books and work, our shoulders suffer and that is gonna really affect our posture. It's gonna give us back pain, it's gonna give us a weak core. Working on the shoulders improves the entire upper body. So let's come down onto our bellies. Feel free to look at the camera just to see what I'm doing if you need a little bit of guidance here. 
We're going to bring our arms into like a cactus shape. Okay, so the elbows are in line with the shoulders, wrists in line with the elbows. Bring your right ear to the ground. Pick your left foot off the ground, so bend the left knee. Then bring your left hand in front of your face. I always like to tent my fingers. And then you're going to push yourself with your left hand so that you roll onto the right side of your body. Your left foot can then tap the ground behind you. Or scratch all the paint off the wall like mine just did. <laughs> so you're pushing yourself onto the right side of your body. So you feel a deep stretch down that right shoulder. Your foot might not go anywhere near the floor, that's fine. We're just pushing ourselves onto the right side of the body. And breathe. Breathe into that right shoulder. Come back to center. Other side, left arm down, left ear down. Right fingertips in front of the face. Bend the right foot up. Push yourself now onto the left side. Maybe that right foot taps the ground behind you. And breathe. You might put this in the chest as well as the shoulder. Again, it's going to depend like where you're tight in your body. So just breathe wherever you end up. And come back to centre. I'm going to roll over onto our back. So however you can get there, roll on over. Okay, last drill before we do our little checks again. Now, bearing in mind, you know, you might not see a huge difference in your checks after just a 20 minute workout or however long we've been going. This stuff does take a little bit of time, but it is so important. And now you have these drills that you can keep using. I'm going to give you a really good tip at the end of this class, remember. So, again, okay, let's grind up through the left foot, right foot up over the left knee. Use your right hand to push your right knee away. So, figure four. Notice how your body feels here, okay? Then place your hands flat down on the ground. We're gonna see if we can lift the hips up off the ground. Lower the hips down, and then keep your legs in the shape, but drop this whole shape over to the left. And then just let your knees like flop wherever they get to. Look up to the ceiling or look over your right shoulder. Your right arm can be in line with your Right shoulder, a little twist and hold. Trying to relax all your muscles here, okay? Nothing should be tense, completely let go of everything. Come back up to center, release that. Okay, let's try the other side. Left leg up, cross it over the right, push that left knee away, palms face down, bridge pose, lift your hips up. Again, notice how it feels on this side. Always noticing, okay, which side of the body you feel this more, which side you might need to work on more. Lower the hips, drop that whole shape towards the right, and look over your left shoulder, relaxing everything down. Relax all the muscles. Back up to center, and then cross the legs. Grab behind the thighs, tuck your chin, and gently rock back and forward until you roll all the way up to like a little squat. And then very slowly, you just come from a downward position. So very slowly, come all the way up. If you feel dizzy, take a seat. Go back down. Once you get up, shake your body, shake it all out. Do little jumps, shake it out. Like literally wiggle every single bit of your body that you can. Shake, shake, shake. Well done. Okay, little tester. Come to standing. Cross your legs. Hands to heart centre. Come to seated. Can you get back up? Maybe you can do it without coming onto your knees. Cross your legs the other way. Come down. Can you get back up this way? <laughs> A little bit of tumbling is always fine as long as you can get back up, okay? Functional mobility. I want you to be able to get up and down off the ground. If you have to cross your legs to come down, then roll onto your knees and then come up, that's also fine. As long as you can get up and down, okay? Next thing was the shoulder openings. So come into your lunge. 
Right arm against the wall, left arm against the wall. Open up. Can you tap that wall behind you? Okay, try the other side. Left leg forward. Try and keep the shoulders against the wall. Okay. Next, come up. Back, flat against the wall, arms up. Cactus. Can you keep those elbows against the wall? And get as high as you can. You might not notice too much difference here, but I would love to know if you do. So let me know in the comments. Um, what was the next one? I've forgotten that. Let me just get up my things so I can see. They are all fours knee circles, but that's, you know, that one wasn't really a test. That one was just a let's check we can open them. Um, and then it was goddess to low lunge. So opening the feet, bend down. Turn, squat, up, wide squat, okay? Turn, drop the back knee, lunge, up, goddess, turn, lunge, up, goddess, well done, turn, lunge, up, goddess, and then skandasana, right? So low side lunge. Get your right bum cheek to that right hip. How far back can you reach that hip? Walk it to the other side. Okay, maybe it's that little bit closer. Walk it to the other side. And the other side. Okay, so the aim is literally just to keep that body moving as much as we possibly can. Okay. Oh my God, I'm knackered. So let me know how you're feeling after that. And one thing that I was going to say, the bonus tip that I want to give you today is to really watch your body. So watch what you were doing. And next time you sit on a chair, let me put the chair up, take a seat. What leg do you always cross over? Stop it. As soon as you notice, cross the other one. It's gonna feel awkward, but cross the other leg over. When you're stood at the school gates or wherever, what, what leg do you put weight on? Switch it. Okay, it's gonna feel awkward. It will feel awkward because you're so you get your body gets into a habit of standing one way. Might even look awkward. Okay, notice which leg you stand on. Crossing your arms. Really awkward. Cross it the other way. Actually, it doesn't look awkward, but it's gonna feel mega awkward. <laughs> when you sit cross-legged, if you go to a yoga class, cross the other leg in front. Okay, I want you, this is your tip for today. I want you to notice every single movement you do, do today, see where you can switch it around and try the opposite side. One major thing for me is when I had my daughter, I would always carry her on this side. Look what's already happening to my body. This side is lengthening, this side is tightening. So what happens then eventually? When I tried to carry on this side, I couldn't. This side of my body was not lengthen enough to get her in there, okay? And even now, that doesn't feel anything. When I do that, I can feel a deep stretch that side because your body gets used to this stuff. So make sure that you are always switching it around. Okay, if, if you have loved this mobility drill class, sorry about being late and the tech issues and whatnot, but we got them in the end. If you've loved this class, for the next 24 hours only, I am going to be giving you access to my beginner's yoga course completely free when you sign up to the membership. So the membership has got a five day free trial. You can sign up now, have your free trial, get your beginner's yoga course. If you stay on past the five day trial, you get to keep that course for free for life. Okay. So the membership is all about staying consistent in this work, okay? It's yoga for flexibility. Not only do we have drills like this for mobility, but we also add in the deep stretching, like today's class, actually. I go live every Monday at 2 p.m. and today's is a yin class, so it's your holding the poses for about five minutes and getting deep into the tissues. 
We also have vinyasa classes where we move a little bit faster, they're a little bit more flowy, and we have slow stretches, okay? So we've got all of this stuff that we do in the membership, and I go live three times a week for 30 minutes to help you stay consistent and to help you start seeing a difference in your body, in your mobility, in your movement and freedom for less aches and pains, for better sleep, for better health, okay? All this stuff, if you imagine what we've done today, Hopefully now you're feeling a bit looser, maybe a little bit achy if you've never done this stuff before, but your body has got room to flow now. You are going to be increasing your oxygen and your blood to the muscles, to the brain, to everywhere else that means that your body is going to be healthier for it. So in the membership, we go live three times a week for different kinds of classes. You have a library of classes of over 100 classes in there. We have challenges. And if you sign up in the next 24 hours, you will also get my beginners yoga course for free which is a little bit more into the spiritual and the mindset stuff. So if that is something that you're interested in, then go and grab that now. That is normally, I think it's £45 at the minute, but the price is going to be going up soon. So if that is something that you're interested in, sign up to the membership now, get access to that. It also has some beginner yoga classes in. So if you have ever thought, you know, I want to work on my, my, my mobility, but yoga seems too hard, it's got beginner yoga classes in there, okay? So you can come... Check out all of that. Come and join me live for some accountability to actually help you show up and do this stuff and improve your mobility for as you get older, right? Because that is what it's all about. It's all about keeping you fit and mobile and being able to move and, you know, live the life that you want to live. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have seen some benefits. You've got these drills now that you can keep doing. I would love to let you know. I would love you to let me know, sorry how you got on today so let me know what exercises you thought were really hard which ones you could do easy and I can't wait to hear about it and hopefully I will see you inside the membership